That was ice, and so is this. How do you melt ice? Well, by heating it, of course. If you apply heat to ice before very long, that frozen water changes into the liquid water very, very rapidly. But that's not the only way to melt ice. By the way, how do you change the water back into ice? You might say, oh, you put it in the refrigerator. That's one way of doing it. Here's another way of doing it. A lump of dry ice, which is solid carbon dioxide. The temperature is much lower than that of ordinary ice. Watch what happens if I tip some water into that little hole that I've gouged in the block of dry ice. Right now, it's being cooled by the dry ice. It's very much like a refrigerator. And within a few minutes, that will change into an ice block. Here's one that's been there for just five minutes. Have a look. I can pick it up and take it out, and it's a little cube or a little sphere of ice. You could use it in your drink to cool it down. Right, so the normal way of making ice into water is to heat it. Water into ice, cool it down with some sort of refrigerator. There are two other ways of melting ice. Do you know either of them? Tell you what, I'll give you a clue. One of them uses a knife. Does that help? Here's a big chunk of ice here. Watch what happens to the surface of the ice when I press the knife down onto that surface. Now, I don't know whether you can see what's happening, but I'll lift it, press it down again, slide it backwards and forwards, and you might be able to see what's happening. The ice is melting, and we're forming a little groove in that ice. Now, that, of course, is exactly what happens whenever you go ice skating. Much bigger knife, of course, on the bottom of the skate, but that slides backwards and forwards over the ice. The pressure of your body pushing down on the ice is melting the ice, making a little channel which is full of water from the, from the molten ice, and that helps you to slide very quickly across. When you go away and leave it, what happens to the water that's sitting there? Some of it refreezes. What happens if I take two ice cubes and press them together? Can you guess? So I push them together side by side, and you know what's happening, don't you? Of course, pressure makes ice melt. So between the two cubes, we now have a film of water. But if I release the pressure now, the cold ice all the way around should be refreezing that water, changing it back into ice. And if I take my fingers away, look at that. They stay together because the water has refrozen. So we melted ice without heating, and we refroze it without a refrigerator. Here's another way of melting ice. What do they do when the road is covered with snow? They don't go around with matches and fires. They often take salt and sprinkle it on the ice or the snow, and that salt makes the ice melt. In fact, right now, those little chunks of ice are melting. And if cars were going across there, it would be easier for them to negotiate the water than it would the frozen water or ice or snow. Now, remembering that, what do you think will happen if I take a fresh ice cube and if I place it in a glass of water like that, and then take a piece of uh, string or wool and lay it over the surface of that ice cube. Then take some of this salt, which is supposed to make ice melt, and sprinkle it on the surface of the ice cube. What's it doing right now? Well, of course, it's making a film of water on the top of the ice cube. It's making some of the ice cube melt. But there's a lot of ice cube there, enough, hopefully, to refreeze that water. Now, if the water refreezes, it means it's changed back into ice where? Around the wall and through the wall. So what happens if I lift the wall up? You guessed it. The ice cube will stay there. Have a look at that. Even enough salt spilled over the edge to attach another ice cube to it, and it'll stay there for quite a while. OK, so that's two ways of melting ice without heat and two ways of refreezing without a refrigerator.